your guide to the truth, the new American media.com. You are live. Hello, everybody. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, Kentucky, Louisville to be specific. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of, well, this is going to be episode one of the TNAM Night Show. Yeah, we're going to do something different. We're going to try to broadcast nightly, at least Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There's a lot of things that we want to do, and now it's just a matter of what we are going to do. And so this right now is a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. Okay, let me see. Uh, we should theoretically have Blake joining us. Once I find him on here, where is that at? Oh, there we go. Joining. Let's see how this goes. Superman. There he is. Can you hear me? Hold on. I, I, I don't have audio from you. How do I get audio from you? I don't know. More. Let's see. Um. I can't hear you. That's an issue. Um, I don't do you, know. Do I you have something it. muted on your side, sir? No. Hmm. Well, this is why we're testing it. Um, yeah. Here's what happens when I mute me. But now I'm unmuted, so now yeah. you should be able to hear me. Right. Just... Blake, I cannot hear. I'll mute him. Oh, now he's muted. But now if I unmute him. Can you hear me now? I still can't hear him. Shoot. <clears throat> I don't know what it would. There, I put him in the waiting room. <laughs> Welcome to episode number one. Brian and Blake discover technology. All right, we'll admit him to the room. Ah, hello. All right, he's here. Hello. Uh oh no, no volume. No, I, I got nothing. I can't hear you. Oh um, man. Um do, do you have to do you have to click to allow um allow audio? Because I know like when I joined it, I, I had to click a button to say yeah. that I would allow audio for the call. Hello, can you hear me? Welcome everybody. While Blake does that, I'm just gonna go through Twitter, tell you what's going on in the world today. Oh, you need to follow us on, on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. All right. How about now? All right. No, no audio from Blake. I'll try to rejoin maybe. Oh, I got nothing. I got nothing. All right. I'll, I'll rejoin. What a fiasco. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Well, thanks for saying hello everybody this should be rocking and rolling all right let's let's do this yeah let's actually go through twitter let's see what's a second georgia county finds thousands more votes and majority are for trump huh Interesting. What is this? A security... Election security expert finds Wisconsin results to be a complete fraud. Current machines do not have the capability to count the mass dumps for Biden in the reported time period. And there's a video. This is on Fox. Uh, it's from the Gateway Pundit. Interesting. So there's two people that have been charged with voter fraud, um, submitting thousands of ballots. Did you hear about that one? Thousands of ballots, uh, homeless ballots, as it were. 
All right, we're going to try to bring Blake into the show one more time. Okay. It's Here's working. Blake with no sound. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. I... You can hear me just fine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's the, the cruel irony of this, the twisted fate. Yeah. Why? Oh, why? He's wearing a Superman shirt for the love of everything, the holy. Superman has no voice? What a cruel joke this has been. Join us next week. Same bat channel, same bat station. Uh, all right, well, how do I get his audio? It's got to be on you, bro. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, so I'm selected my microphone. Select a speaker. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Now, hold on here. Select a speaker. And? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. There he is. It is. It's, a, it's a bird. It's, it's, it's plane. Right? Something like that. All right. What up, Blake? Oh. I got you. I got you. Excellent. It's, it's good to be here. You cannot minimize Zoom when you're recording this meeting. Oh. Okay, Zoom. All right. Nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zoom. Uh, all right, so I, I already welcomed everybody to the episode number one of the TNAM Night Show. Cool. Yes. Blake, tell us, uh, re recap to the audience. Say hello to everybody again. Uh, remind them how you uh, first crossed paths with the New American Media. Uh, some of the, the key highlights along the journey uh, over the past, uh, man, how many years have we known each other now? Eight years. Um, walk us yeah. the journey that got you to wherever you are now. Take a few minutes. Explain, explain yourself, son. Well, this is a long story. So we have to go back. Yeah, this is about eight years. Um, May, May 2012, approximately. That's when I was a um, young and ambitious delegate state delegate of Nevada for Ron Paul. And um, I caught some election fraud when I was uh, in Reno, Nevada and um, put it on YouTube. It uh, was kind of a viral video and Brian reached out to uh, interview me and um, we started chatting. We were both kind of like um, new to the, uh, I guess, citizen journalism, activism, uh, internet radio thing and so yeah um so we just kind of started i kind of listened you know he reached out for the interview i started kind of listening to some of his shows and then we i went on the interview and then uh you know i told him hey i also do radio and then we just kind of uh we kind of just kind of i guess you know liked each other's work and that we'd uh, collaborate and we, we did and then brian was in la i was in las vegas and uh, yeah, we, we made a few road trips, did some uh, trips in the field. Um, one of our big uh, events was the, uh, the Bundy Ranch Rebellion. We, we caught a lot of that. So we were first, uh, yeah, we were uh, on the ground for that one. And uh, boy, a lot of other adventures and just a lot of different little events. We've gone to a Politicon a couple of times, uh, Conscious Life Expo. Um, what else? Uh, did NAM? I know you cover that. You cover that a lot. I did. I was there once, mm -hmm. I think, and um, yeah, and, and various other things. So yeah, we we've don't, been working don't. together for a number of years. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I'm missing don't forget, a lot. Of stuff. Don't forget 2016. Remember what oh, we did? Yeah, well, 2016. Yeah, it was huge. So this is just, yeah the early years, and then yeah, 2016 was a uh, that was a big milestone. So that was both well, Cleveland and Philadelphia. And yeah, it was just a huge, yeah, like the election of a lifetime. Yeah, it was just, it was crazy. And so we caught a lot of that stuff and got a lot of great footage. And uh, yeah, we, we've been in some interesting uh, historical events. And uh, yes, these uh, yeah, United that, States 21st century. Yeah, and then here we are, we find ourselves, uh, what are we, two, two weeks now? Th th today's Tuesday, right? We're, we're two weeks past an election and we still don't know what's going on. Um, we do know that Joe Biden invented a new office. So the office of the president elect, it's not a thing. It's not a thing, but he, but he like, they printed it 
they had a lectern and probably for the first time ever, the Democrats have an American flag behind them uh, where they're not too embarrassed by it. But um, we, we know that the media companies have called what they've called, but like all across the country, we like many people like me, we went to bed or, or it rode out through the late evening. Everything was swinging Trump and it wasn't swinging. It was swung. It was 600,000 ahead, 700,000 ahead. It was like, here it is. Here's the red wave. And then everybody just called a timeout. Like, like Zach Morris on saved by the bell. <laughs> nice. Like, like, like screech yeah. just stopped, Whoa. you know, Slater does this. And, um, it, it, and then everything switches back to Biden. You're like, the, the guy who didn't campaign, he has no energy. He's got baggage. And you're telling me that guy got more votes than, than Barack Obama. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. It doesn't pass the smell test. I know there's the I hate Trump vote, the orange man bad vote. I get that. I understand that. Yeah. But really? So anyway, two weeks in, um, Blake walk us through man what what's what are your what what were your recollections on election day election night the next day and just the subsequent two weeks in between walk us through your emotions covering this what what's on your mind well um yes i was in uh, arizona watching this um which is very interesting and I went to bed or not, I was actually up very late, um, maybe like, you know, but, but on the uh, Pacific time, but I mean, it was still like to the point where I, I could kind of comfortably see that this was going to go on for a very long time. But at one point at an earlier time of the night, it looked like this was going to be an easy Trump victory. I expected Trump to win handily. And then it looked like, oh, okay, this is in the bag. And then all of a sudden, like, something went wrong and then all of a sudden it was it was weird because I was, I was watching it on uh fox and i was watching even like bill hammer who was getting exhausted that was kind of a funny uh watching that if you got to see that but he's going over all these counties in like michigan and pennsylvania and he's talking about the huge swings that were going on for trump like he was like wow you know can you imagine how many of these people that went for trump this time that didn't in 2016 for hillary he's pointing all these things out and you're thinking oh this is just a shellacking um you know trump's got you know pennsylvania michigan wisconsin he may even win minnesota and all of a sudden there's like this weird thing going on with arizona where they were, um, you know, all of a sudden they were acting like it was it was done. It was official. They are they already knew, even though they did a poor job explaining it. Like things just got weirder and weirder, and you knew the thing was just gonna something was was off. Maybe um, suspicious, and all of a sudden was like, uh, well, I don't know. It was like the the earth stood still. Something like just things all changed. And um, it, it was fascinating, but also like, uh, you know, this is, um, this is going to be, it's what I was af afraid of. This is going to be the, uh, the recount was going to be worse than 2000 by many levels. And it is, and it's going to continue to go. It's awesome. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of work to do because there's very high stakes and, and big consequences on this victory for either side. So the, the stakes really couldn't literally be any higher. You would think, uh, you know, within, I don't know, but it is, is, is crazy and um, absurd as this uh, world we live in right now is, but um, it's, it's, it's epic. It's awesome. And here we are. And it's good to be here, Brian. Thank you. It's been a while. It has been a while, but people like us, we can't, sit on the sidelines we're not built for the sidelines you know we can't like, turn this off yeah once you go truth you never go how's that go what's that phrase yeah you really can't go to the matrix like uh you can't unscramble that? the eggs you cannot yeah. unscramble the eggs there you go they're cooked they're cooked <laughs> um i want to thank the people by the way if, if you're watching on youtube live you might not have his feed Yet, we're trying to figure out the best way to do this, but you're listening to Blake, the eccentric Wally. Hi, <laughs> I called you that. Uh, well, uh, Blake, really quick, where are the best places to follow you these days? Because I know you, you've had some different uh, incarnations of yourself. Where's the best place? Yeah, where's my next uh, rebrand? Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess just Twitter for now. I think I'm Blake underscore Wally underscore. Um, and then I guess you could check out website. I think I got most of my, 
a good majority of my stuff is there eccentric perspective.com but i i yeah but uh yeah it's a new uh, frontier but i've been doing um a, a lot of stuff so uh fairly active over the summer and such and uh plan on doing a lot more going forward and um anyway um yeah so it's, we'll start with twitter but there's a lot of things in motion this will be building of, of course so i'll stop there absolutely i want to thank the people in the chat room uh we got loyalty over money we got keith piper we got the others who aren't chatting please chat <clears throat> we are going to make this as interactive as possible um, we want a place where we can kind of just digest the, the news that we've taken in throughout the day we all take hey did you see that thing hey did, let me show you this thing now that's that's different but facebook has decided to delete me as a person uh, delete the new American media page, which is why we're on parlor now. So follow us over there as well uh, by searching the new American media. But, um, you me know, too, I, I want to, what's up? I was going to say, yeah, me, me too, Brian on, on the Facebook. I'm, um, yeah, it's like, like 20 more days in the penalty box or ho however they do that. You can't even... high, were we high sticking or low sticking? What were we even doing? Nobody told us anything. Nobody gives you yeah. any answer. They just throw you in the gulag and silence you and you go, is this really the future of, of Earth? Is this really what's going to happen in humanity? We have a social credit score, the China style, where if, 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 if we say something that upsets dear leader, we're silenced. Like, this is creepy. This is beyond creepy. Yeah, the ref blows the whistle. Uh, you get put in the penalty box. You don't know what you did. They don't have to say anything. There, there's no replay. You're, you're just, you're in there. Yeah, so it, that's the world, uh, well... Sometimes that, that's the social media world in 2020, and it's, it's really gotten to the uh, extreme side of things. I'm still alive on, on Twitter for now. I'm just shadow banned to, uh, into oblivion on Twitter. But uh, Facebook, I'm completely, be, I'm completely off for a couple more weeks, just like you, Brian. Yeah, I, I'm in the penalty box for 18 more days. I'm in the penalty box for 18 more days, but they, uh, they definitely deleted our channel. They deleted the New American Media which is it's just very interesting um let me let me check over here oh um it'd be normal if we lived in a communist regime like you know if this was like china this would be like oh look at they shut down the thing again but uh it's not supposed to be like that you've been building that for a while and they just it's like a castle made of sand man it's it's unfortunate and sand castles made of sand fall in the sea eventually Oh, it's a good song. All right, the great Jimi Hendrix. Oh, oh wait, now, I, now I'm going to get strike. I'm going to get a strike for singing oh, uh, yeah, six seconds in a song. Copyright, yep. You're going to shut it down. Flag. And sand made of the sea. Chile. I wonder if I could sing it that way. Okay. Nice. Um, well done. All right, so I want to address the caravan. This is uh, not Caravan to Midnight, although we are going to bring Mr. John B. Wells. I'm, I, I'm so excited to relaunch the show and get things going once we figure out the exact studio, the, the exact technology, because um, we have all these different operating systems that we're going to employ to do this. But um, yeah. speaking of caravan, I just want to say that they're having a, what is this, a Trump caravan this Saturday. Uh, where is it going to be? Over here in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Expected to be huge turnout. The last one was a few days before the election. Turned out to be over a thousand cars. Um, oh, and they say uh, Facebook disabled my account. No reason or warning given. They've disabled each new account. I've created four of them since August. And Keith Piper is saying the deep state is too deep. Blake, is the deep state too deep or not deep enough? No, I think it's gotten deep enough uh, a long time ago. Um, I don't know. Yeah, 70s, we wouldn't want to pinpoint it. But the point is, it's gotten worse and it needs to be uh, stopped before it... Um, consumes us all into some uh yeah crazy uh dystopian nightmare yes sir all right well then let's or, do oh, oh, so i switch paradise for them but anyway yeah. or what well i say it'd be, it'd be great for them if, if you're an elitist or you're a part of the deep state it'd probably be awesome in this sort of a hunger game sort of way where they all you know live above everybody else who's out in the, you know out there for their the amusement and their uh exploitation hasn't that been the way it's always it's been Eh. monkey killing monkey killing monkey over the pieces of the ground silly monkeys give them blades they forge a blade and where there's one they're bound to divide right in two 
some uh, excellent poetry. Which, um, that, is Ma- that is Maynard James Keenan from the band Tool. That's a song called Right In Two. Excellent. Don't these talking monkeys know that Eden has enough to go around? Good stuff. What it's a wise it? man. S- silly monkeys, give them thumbs. They'll make a club. Uh, now, you know, I got to look it all up. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's deep brilliant. stuff. Uh, he's, he's quite a brilliant guy. I, I've actually heard him a couple times on Rogan uh, recently. So, um, yeah, I never really dug into the lyrics. I never got into Tool Ooh. that much, Ooh. though I've always appreciated them. And I, I think that's, uh, yeah, they, they do a lot of interesting things, cutting edge with poetry and the music notes, harmony. Was it like the uh, rhythms? I, I forget exactly, but it's more of like a, a scientific and mathematical approach. I'm done, done. Okay. Time signatures, time signatures, different, uh, yeah, Danny Carey, just the offbeat, a lot of different stuff going on there. But maybe we should do a reaction channel. Maybe we should, because they're one of my favorite bands. And uh, the actual, the, the, the quote on my personal email address is, Repugnant is the creature who would squander the ability to lift an eye to heaven conscious of his fleeting time here. From the same song. Wow. <laughs> that one doesn't rhyme but it's an awesome line yeah. um but, but yeah maybe we should do some reaction videos do some music reaction i love those and if you're not like super into this we should put the lyrics out and like do a discussion like play through that'd be awesome all yeah. right well um I, I changed the zoom meeting view so it looks like now it's speaker view so whoever's talking should theoretically bounce i'm recording it i don't know how long of a show i get to do on this version of zoom so i'm just gonna go until i can't um, so I guess maybe Blake, I, I could toss it over to you. Um, we were talking off air about, uh, some of the stories of the day, some of the, um, some of the, you know, the, the leading stories, the trending stories, you know, look, we're winding down. If people have, have kind of led a day where they weren't wrapped up in this, what do they need to get caught up on? So what story would you like to start with? Well, I guess it's um, it's really the election that's going on. We don't really know how this is going to uh, unfold and who the president is. Clearly, I mean, the media seems to know, um, but a lot of us are are not entirely uh, convinced as to the results. Um, some high profile uh, people are um, calling this out: Sidney Powell and uh, Rudy Giuliani. Um, calling out some of this blatant uh, potential voter fraud. So it's not over. Um, and yeah, that has, um, it's going to have severe consequences for the, our, our country going forward. Vastly different uh, roads that we could take going towards the future. Although without getting into too much of the uh, strategizing and, and game planning, it's still, a, it's just this very his historical time and it's never, I don't think it's been this heated and it's been, yeah, the high stakes and with, um, with the software that they've got going on and the, the, ba- the fact that you could vote by mail this year thrown on, on top of that, along with this sketchy uh, Dominion software that they've been uh, employing, which, which was, uh, I guess, originated in Venezuela. It was uh, something cu- kind of cooked up by Chavez and the communist regime, like how to like influence elections. And um, what, a been, like, what a brilliant idea. What a brilliant idea. So, yeah. So who's who's the uh, who's the genius at the State Department? Who or Homeland Security? You know, and, and once again, who runs the election? Who, who it's the Department of Homeland well, Security? Is it is it the the who Trump just well, somebody else today? What who? Good who question, Brian. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a good question because I'm not really sure. Maybe it depends on which state because some of the states use this Dominion software and and people are involved in getting kickbacks for using this stuff. And then there's a tie-in between uh, Canada and Spain, and they've got servers in Germany. So the counts are going overseas, and they're counting them over there. And then Serbia. Uh, so there's all these tie-in, all these foreign influences that are into with you know meddling with our election in a way. It's going through all these different uh, places for different reasons. And it doesn't make any sense. And then there's getting people getting kickbacks in these states that are using it, and they all happen to be uh, going for Biden. I, I believe in this situation. 
So, um, you know, we're trying to bring some attention to this and call this out. And then they're actually um, shadow ban. They're, they're kind of trying to censor this, this word from, uh, I, I guess, getting out while they're just trying to say, like, it's already a done deal. And, you know, the AP is already called for Biden. Media is called it for Biden. But there is absolutely uh, nothing official yet. And this is, this is far from over. And there's some major developments going on that people need to be uh, uh, looking at. I would say. So what do you know about Sidney Powell? What do you know about Rudy? What do you, what do we know about? Like, I feel like the past couple of days, let me back up. Yeah. What is the Kraken? Has the Kraken been released yet? I'm pass. <laughs> pass. Cause, cause that's kind of like the, uh, it's the code word, if you will for, you know, let it rip, let the information rip. And I've seen from Sydney, I've seen very specific information. I'm starting to hear reports that Trump not only won, he won in a massive landslide. He actually got 410 electoral votes. Yeah, those maps are going around and they are credible. They could very well happen. Record turnout, super popular. What? It's not what evidence would you need to see to satisfy? The, like now we're just talking computer hacking stuff, right? Because this isn't really about, it, it can be about dead people voting. It can be about all of the other places of fraud. And honestly, those other places of fraud where there were circumstances where poll watchers were not allowed into an area where they were able to observe Essentially, all of those votes have been contaminated now, right? They're, they're unusable because they were improperly added and shuffled into the rest of the deck. So those get removed. The dead people on the rolls get removed. And then you add in any mechanical voter fraud. You add, add in any... There's a lot. There's a lot to this. I mean, what are, what are we looking at? Do you think that the general public would ever accept this? Do you think this turns into, you know, more of what we saw during the summer, just opportunists burning their own cities down or burning neighboring cities down just for the pure chaos of it all? I mean, where does this head? Where, where does this take us? You know, is there, it, if you were betting, man, I know I'm asking you like 75 questions, shut up and let him answer one. Yeah. But uh, also if you were betting, man, what percent chance would you give Trump to get the most votes the elect most electoral votes and become president elect. What percent chance would you give them? I mean, if this is a fair election and they could actually ensure the integrity of who actually voted and match them up, and there's no, they take all the illegal votes off or whatever anomalies and things that they found discrepancies. Um, I, I think Trump wins in a landslide. That's what I've always thought. Um, I always thought that just, the Democrats, their only real way they could do this to win would be, especially with a terrible candidate like Biden, would be to cheat. And that for them to just get like record turnout all of a sudden, like, you know, as you said, like, you know, he's, he's beating Obama in numbers, like where did all these people suddenly come from? And then there's all these, these issues um, at the end of the election um, with all these states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and all that. But um, yeah, certainly. And of course, you know, if you were trying to cheat an election and you were just getting overwhelmed by the other side that you wanted to lose and they were having record turnout and you were like freaking out and you needed to have like people like bring in boxes of like post-dated ballots, um, you wouldn't want poll watchers, you know, to, to see that either. Um, and so I, I sympathize, but at the same time, this is, uh, you know, the future of our country at stake. And, um, you know, we got to get this one right because, it, yeah, this could be a consequence. Elections have consequences. I'll just, I'll leave it at that and I'll turn it over to you, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been surreal. It's been surreal because in my universe, a, a, a dominant reelection was, I mean, that's what, it wasn't my personal preference as much as it was my instinct based on everything I'd been watching for the past year. Um, and then to see everything get paused and everything start to slowly or quickly flip over just enough, you know, just enough to, 
didn't pass the sniff test. I, I, I'm seeing something about the number of 90 year olds, 90 years old and o- older that almost every, what, whatever it was, it was that a massive percentage of those 90 and older are all now registered and all voting Democrat. You know, so it's like, there's got to be ways you figure out the age bracket and you send the first batch of mail off to the side and you just hope nobody notices. And if they do, then you correct it. But all of those are just sitting ready to, oh, Gertrude just voted Biden. She voted all red, but nope, no, she went blue for, for president. Yep, president only. President Biden, none of the down vote ticket, down ticket votes. Um, the, can it be proven? Can it be proven in time? Will, will, will the left, who couldn't accept a legitimate Trump win four years ago, could they accept this win, Blake? No, I don't think so. I mean, that's where it really gets interesting because it looks like there's enough evidence. I mean, without until they actually you know show and tell time, you know, it just seems like Trump could very well be the legitimate president. Still, he he still is. There's nothing really official as as far as the electoral college is you know for some of these major steps that have to happen to actually make it official. So it's still live. It's it's still. Um, uh, I'm losing my train of thought, Brian. You gotta you gotta you gotta save me here. No, I can I can save you. I, I mean, look, the, the election is one of the stories going on. We also have the tech giants up on up on Capitol Hill getting yeah. grilled again. Um, yeah. <clears throat> as I said, the New American Media was uh, deleted you know, a, a credentialed media company that had Secret Service clearance to cover the 2016 election that, that's been around for the past nine years, covering all the interesting stories, Yeah, you know, uh, trying to be a nice supplement to the the corporate media, the state media, the uh, bought and paid for uh, regurgitated media. And we were just erased by Facebook. No, no reason given, no opportunity to remedy any alleged issue, no human to speak with. Just erased, just erased. Um, Memory hold. No, it, it hurts. You know, I and how they do it, where they uh, like you can't even like you have no control like to like like something that people say, or if you see you know, scroll through a feed or something and you want to oh that's it like that or you want to comment, it doesn't allow you to. It just says you're you know it just says you're you're banned for x amount of days still but it doesn't even like you know alert the other person like hey i can't you know this person isn't allowed to respond you know but it's it just makes you you know makes you like an asshole when you can't like you know comment or anything or or you know like posts or people say something or they send you stuff on messenger or what have you so yeah. it's unfortunate and then one of the other consequences not that I'm, but um it's bad when they cut you off from all you, there's a lot of people that I know that I've met a lot of people on my Facebook are people I've actually met in real life, their friends, their family, their coworkers, their classmates. That's the only way I even, you know, know how to reach out to any of them. And so they just like cut you off from so many people. Uh, it's staggering what they have the power to do and then to just not even have to be held accountable at all to, uh, you know what what you actually did i i can't even have a, i don't even have a voice to, to say what i did nobody there's no person there's no customer service there's no form there's nothing they don't have to tell you anything and that's what's re- really terrifying so now they're kind of forcing us to uh i, I guess find alternative methods but um yeah it, it's sad that it's it's gotten to this point and um it's it, it's sort of sad for America, but at the same time, yeah, they get they're getting grilled on, on Capitol Hill again as as they, they as they should, and they got to squirm a little, and that was the you know entertaining to watch. But um, yeah, Brian, I don't know how we uh, it, yeah, it's this corruption between these big tech and the, you know deep state, and perhaps you know communist chinese i mean it's, you start tying these things in together and it's uh it paints a really a strange picture of where we are um in this country today and uh here we are again doing uh news media because the uh the existing apparatus is uh failing us as, as you like to say 
Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> was it doing the job? The the uh, the legacy media isn't willing to do. No, uh, it's the new American media because the old American media has failed us. You know, it's like if there was a working, functional, trustworthy apparatus that brought us the most relevant, interesting stories of our day and we could actually trust them. You know, and it's like I've never minded if somebody isn't perfect. I've, I've never minded. Um, if somebody is intentionally misleading me, that's what I care about. Like if, if, if you're just straight up lying to me, to coerce me, to, to coerce, to intimidate, to obfuscate, to, to trick, to finagle, to bamboozle, <laughs> I didn't land on Plymouth Rock, um, it was bamboozled. Sorry, now, now I'm just combining multiple movies together. No, it's all right. So you're, you're not mad at the uh, useful idiots, but you're mad at the people that actually uh, knowingly are, uh, know exactly what they're well, doing. But- I'm, I, 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 I don't like the useful idiots at all. Um, they know what they're doing. Uh, we, we, we give way too many of them credit for, although how many of these people are going to be convicted pedophiles that are attacking people in the streets? Like they finally get arrested on their mug sheets you know, they're, they're, uh, well, the mug shots, they're rap sheets, rather. Um, the guy that cold cocked and knocked the guy out from behind, he got, ar- he got arrested and he's a convicted pedophile, just like in Kenosha, two pedophiles. Oh, people attacking the Trump supporters. Yeah. You're that one guy. Yeah. yeah. Was- so, so, sorry. I, I, I jumped to that without any segue. So I was just kind of alluding did to telepathically, it. but I just wanted to make sure for the audience. So, all right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there are Looney Tunes out there. There are people that aren't right upstairs. I get that. Um, but I'm, I'm talking about media sources. Media sources yeah. can make mistakes all day. You know, yeah, yeah, if, okay. if your instinct is right, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if your energy and your agenda was really in the right spot, I, I, can, I can forgive, you know, saying a little too much, jumping to a conclusion every now and then. But it's, it's, it's when it's a willful misrepresentation, you know, like the fine people hoax. You know, I, I mean, for Fox News to do that, like I get why CNN does it. Oh, look. Come he's on, Brian, if I give you a $2 million contract, I'm going to make you a star. I just need you to read the script and smile. And if anybody brings up anything about COVID, you, you call them a conspiracy theorist. It's very easy. Perfect. I'm in. Oh, I'm in. A nice office in Manhattan. Mm. Get your little cabin out in the Catskills. Two million dollars. Chris Wallace. Yep. That was that was just that was just just you know Trump had an awful performance in there, but part of it was definitely coming from Chris Wallace and those stupid questions and yep. just w- when you're misframing, misframing. I don't even know if that's a word, but. It's 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 in, it's intentionally deceptive. It's from the media, is what I'm saying. Is when the, the CNNs or the Foxes, when they're going to give you crap, and you know it doesn't pass the sniff test. It's not real, and they push it anyway. And the other person is smart enough to know it's not real. I just have a hard time. I, like that's when you lose my credibility. You, you know, you you lose trust with me. You lose your credibility. And to I don't really have a lot of media companies that I enjoy content from. <laughs> You know, like some of them are so far out there. I'm like, I can't trust anything you're doing because you're not blue check marked. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything. But, you know, when you get too far out on the fringe, you got to be careful what you're what you're sending around. But on the flip side, it's like I've already seen enough from the legacy media to know that they're not legitimate players either. So their cachet, their, their status symbol, their blue check mark it doesn't mean anything to me either. And I'm like, what the hell am I left with? You know? So it's like, I try to come on and, and, and do the news and figure out what I saw throughout the day. What's important. What are some key takeaways? And, and also kind of discuss what I've heard, you know, finger, we, we would put our ears to the, uh, to the train tracks uh, out in Pennsylvania. My grandparents lived out there and, and you try to listen. Can you hear the train? Oh, the Jimi Hendrix song. It's one of my favorites. Hear my train of coming. It's coming around the bend. I hear that train of coming since I don't know when. I'm stuck nope. in Folsom Prison. Yeah, very different. Dragging on. 
Johnny Cash. Yeah. Well, what was yours? Yours was uh, You're Jimmy? My Train of Coming by Jimi Hendrix. How's that one go? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't be able to do it justice, but it, it's a, a fantastic song. Was it? Okay. Well, what was his, what was Jimi Hendrix's um, Minneapolis connection, his Minnesota connection? Didn't he have one? It wasn't just Prince, was it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Bob Dylan. Maybe. Oh, you think we're thinking of Bob Dylan? He redid the All Along the Watchtower. I, that's... No, no, no. I, I just, I, I thought Jimi Hendrix had some sort of connection to to your home state of Minnesota. Is all I was getting at. I was, I thought. Good question. I don't know if that's true. Um, that so I know he came that. over from the UK and all that stuff, but I, anyway, maybe I was thinking of Prince. But anyway, yeah. look, the, the, the point is we're doing the news because the old American media has failed us. The new American media is a band of citizen journalists that are all across the country, and we're fed up with the crap. We, do, we don't want the intentional deception. When we sniff out a rat, we want to dig in. We want to find the story. We want to put our ear to the train track and see if we can figure out what's coming 20 miles away. You know, can, can, can we... Can we tune our senses to figure out have we read enough press releases to figure out what they're saying because of what they're not saying can you reverse engineer a press release i can i I can smell some bs i i can smell it like like a champ like a champ i don't even know what these accents are but but i'm not quoting anything i'm just going to characters um but yeah that's why that's why we're doing the new american media that's why people are turning turning away from Fox. We know why they turned away from CNN. But but we're just trying to figure out and make sense of the interesting stories on the day, Blake. We are. And um, there's definitely a lot of very interesting stories. Yeah, the uh, future of our country is currently at line. Uh, we've got the big tech giants that are trying to uh, censor us. They're on Capitol Hill. Um, we have COVID shutdowns. I know in different countries are probably canceling Christmas and things like that. Um, I saw an article today on the activist post talking about Greece. If people want to like leave their house. They have to um, like text the government, like one of like six options. Like they're either a going to the pharmacy or you're, you know, C you're going to go walk your dog or <laughs> you're going to go to the bank because you can't do it online. Um, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. So you got to uh, let them know where you're at at all times. It's uh, the Big Brother uh, Society. And uh, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. And then, of course, I don't know, depending on what state you're in, um, you know, how many people you can have in your house uh, for, for Thanksgiving or what have you. So they're putting in all kinds of uh, crazy rules. So anyway, we're, we're still here. It's the holidays. What do you think, Brian? About the holidays? No, about the other you know, shutdowns up for the holidays. Are you going to be able to have one? Are you going to be legally be within your state jurisdiction or whatever your rules? Uh, to are you going to be under the you know uh, the limits of uh, people in the household? Are you going to try to hide grandma somewhere? Or are you going to I don't know find little loopholes with uh, with the relatives? Maybe some can hang out downstairs, uh, but they can't be so many in the house. So you got to have somebody ready in case somebody comes in, somebody has to leave because you have 11 and that can be problematic. So you may have to just take turns, but you know, not everybody can take a turn, but maybe some people have to take, it, it can be an inconvenience really in case they're watching you. You don't want to get uh, you know, fined or, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. What, 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 what jurisdiction does a federal government have? All right. Like they're, they don't have, right. This is state to state. And even state to state, what the hell can a state even do? And they, well, I guess they could send the police. And if the police want to enforce the law, if the sheriff wants to. What enforce- law? What, what law are we even talking about? Like, walk me through. What are we, what are we even say? You know, I saw something funny. It said, um, you can't have more than 10 people, wh- whatever they were saying. Uh, for Thanksgiving, but you can for a funeral. So he's, they're, they're going to serve a, they're, they're having a funeral for a turkey and refreshments will be served. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, is, that's good. it's beyond silly season right now. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, are we still supposed to be scared? Who's still scared of this thing? Apparently there are people that are, and they'll, you know, yell no. at you. 
I don't know, like this, we, we, people in big blue cities, I guess mostly, because I've, uh, I've traveled around a bit and uh, it's usually where it's, you know, more strictly enforced. And uh, yeah, some people get like, any of those places you can't even like go in or near. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really unfortunate. So yeah, people are living in fear. I don't know how many are actually rebelling, rebelling or secretly rebelling. I when do they push back? I, I don't know anymore, Brian. I, I'm uh, surprised and uh, as much as anybody, I guess, that this is still going on uh, all, the, all these months later. We're almost at the end of the year now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, let's see. Loyalty over money in the chat room. He's saying this is far from over. In the end, Trump wins. Hey, look, I... I I have that feeling as well. I think it's going to be a massive blowout. I've, I've said that from the beginning. Um, Blake, is, is it interesting that Ricky Rebel went on Siri and asked, how young is our president? And then Siri responded, naming Kamala Harris and gave her birth date. Was that real or was that faked? Do you know? Did you see that story? Here's the thing. This was weird about it. I swear this is true. I, he did that and I did it immediately on my phone. I took a screenshot of it because I, I heard it. It was real. And then when I tried to record it with my camera, I tried it again, and then it didn't work. I couldn't get it to work again. But it did so, work for you once. Yeah, but I can't prove it. But I mean, it, if I took a screenshot sure. of it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's weird. Right. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I gave the okie dokie sign, and someone's going to screenshot that. Sure you did. Illuminati, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, all right big huge jair big huge jair one two three four one says yo they're getting harder to tell apart uh the media knows exactly what they're doing yes and and, and jair that's that, that's exactly what i'm talking about they know exactly what they're doing and that's why when you catch them in in some blatant tomfoolery <laughs> some, some chicanery tomfoolery all right that's awesome i love it you know, you must 86 these people from your lives. You know, if they burn through your trust, they have to be 86. Accident is one thing. Knowingly reporting false stuff is uh, something you can't, you cannot tolerate. Uh, loyalty over money says no matter what happens, there's going to be chaos in the streets. We're in the fight of our lives. If Trump doesn't win, our country is gone. It's so important for people to make a stand. Blake, what say you? Absolutely. Yeah, that, would, that could absolutely force us into a civil war. There's a thought that maybe if Biden, if he does win, he's going to be in a box with the Senate and the House, and maybe we can fight back. But with the big tech censorship and um, possibly that he's controlled or compromised with the communist Chinese and the globalists, I mean, a anything could happen. There might not ever be a, a fair election again. So this is, this is really crucial. Um, yeah, this is that important. And I don't think it's, yeah, we have to be very, we do a very thorough job of, of going through these votes and making sure that this was a uh, in, indeed a fair election because we can't afford to get this wrong. I mean, if they're unable to prove, uh, if they're unable to prove anything, I mean, I, I guess, I guess that, 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 that weird old guy that smells people smells little kids. <laughs> he's, he's allegedly the most popular president in history after campaigning zero all year. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, that's going to be it. We'll be uh, exchanging these messages on like a uh, parlor because we won't be able to, to go anywhere else. And we'll just be uh, until we're all hunted down and, and sent to uh, re-education and people will be like, yeah, yeah, they'll be, they'll be rooting for it. It's, it's going to, it would, it could be very bad. I don't know how that would. That parlor. Would yeah. Parlor. We're going to end up, do, we're going to end up. We're going to end up uh, communicating through pigeon. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to have to Velcro. I'm going to have to duct tape a cassette to the leg of a pigeon and then launch it in your general direction and hope it finds you. It's gonna, you know, you can do that. Those are actually really, it, it, you know what? That could happen. I don't want to say, yeah, it, you could start with Facebook and Twitter and then it's parlor and gab. And then all of a sudden it's, it's back to the phones or it's the, the, the signal or whatever apps that they have. And the next thing you know, it's uh, ham radio. And then after that, it's like, oh, we guess we have to use uh, carrier pigeons. 
But hey, that could be the thing that, uh, you know, after the thousand years of darkness, maybe uh, people will, it was the pigeons that finally got us out of the tyranny. The thousand year tyranny that started when Joe Biden and the Democrats stole the election in 2020. Attempted to yeah, steal an exactly. election. Attempted. I, 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 th I think they're, they're, they're busted. I think they're dead to rights. I mean, I, I, just, I just have to hope that everybody saw this coming and that there were cameras and that there's like that everything has been just captured. I have to, I have to hope because if not, I mean, I guess you don't deserve to keep power. Right. Like if you're dumb enough to let something go this, this poorly. <sighs> right. Yeah. I think, yeah. If Benjamin Franklin were in the room, if he was on this call, he'd be like, yeah, yes, Brian, you got it. Exactly. So either, yeah, it's time for us to, uh, you know, get the word out and um, help our country. So we're, we're, we're on a mission here. I, I say, Dr. Franklin, I say, Dr. Franklin, what, what have you given us? We've given you chicanery, sir, if you can keep it. <laughs> well done. I, and I like seen. It. And yes. seen. <laughs> well done. Well done. It's got to bring the chicanery back. Um, yeah. Now I feel like having some chicory coffee. You ever have chicory? I've heard of it. What, what is that exactly? I know uh, I've had it. We'll have to let the Google machine describe it properly. Oh, okay. but it's I mean, I got bought it once. So I was like, chicory? What's, I don't try it. And it's, oh, it's good. Oh, yeah, it's like a coffee it's tea drink. Like a, huh. it's yeah, it's good. I'm, I want to get some uh, chicanery, some some chicory. Um, but anyway, so so that's going on. It's just it's just gonna be a matter of if they're gonna be able to identify the fraud. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Um, what else interesting is going on in in the news today? Let's let's maybe wrap this up here. What? How much time have we been on? That's I uh, yeah. I, those are some of the big stories on a on a Tuesday night. How about another vaccine? Moderna with a 94.5% effective COVID-19 vaccine. And then Pfizer with their 90% uh, effective vaccine. What, what say you? Do, you? do you find it weird that this all is coming out after the election when Operation Warp Speed has been going since March or April, whenever it, it, it took off? Or do you feel like they may have waited till the election was over just to stick it to them for some unknown reason? or? I don't know what to think. I thought, I thought these things took a lot more time to, uh, to to test. So I'm surprised that it's out this fast. But I guess if it's on, you know, warp speed, I I I don't know. I just I just don't want anything to do with it because I don't really think that COVID's that big of a threat. So it's not they're treating it as though I don't know. It's the it's the worst thing in, in the world when it's really like the the survival rate. It's, yeah, it's 95 percent effective, but people are pointing out like a 99 point you know, something percent uh, survival rate you know i mean if i was you know 78 and i had pre-existing conditions and i really thought that uh, the vaccine was good for i'm like yeah go ahead whoever wants to do it sure um but yeah i don't see it's like it just seems silly and it's just a, a racket and a joke at this point but um it's reality i guess as as, as long as the majority keep Try and you know see it seriously. I guess it's reality for now. Some people's reality. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, all right. Well, what what else? What what else is in? I can I can look at what I've sent out. Well, what about this one in Wayne County, Detroit? Uh, they're refusing to certify their election results, and people are saying that's a huge win for President Trump. Have you seen this one? I saw it uh, break recently on Twitter, but I haven't uh, dug into it yet. So. Um... Yeah, what, what what do you got there, Brian? I'm 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 seeing a lot of it. Uh, the president's tweeting about it. Charlie Kirk's tweeting about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trump said uh, four minutes ago, more votes than people, and that is the least of it. With oh, two yeah. exclamation mark, three exclamation marks. Oh, oh, that's a three exclamationer. Yeah, Ooh. I bet they did some really bad stuff in Michigan. Um. So, I mean, and all of them, it's, it's going to be huge. And it could very well be that like 405 um, electoral, whatever the final amount, it could just, just be a, yeah, the red tsunami or what have you, just a, uh, and I think that is as soon as that unravels and hopefully that's um, soon, I guess, well, we're having a little fun with this. As long as the outcome is, is, is set and then they'll, 
fight back and then who knows how that will unfold and that's uh why we'll be uh covering the news because it, it's not going to just end and everyone's just going to be happy it's not going to be like oh okay that's cool uh yeah it looks like the democrat yeah they cheated in the election and uh you know, we'll just pretend like we'll sweep it all under the rug and uh, let's go back to uh, business as usual. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, exciting to see this. And uh, I'm looking forward and we'll be uh, covering this, uh, Brian, I'm sure. Right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. So Yeah, I think it's about to get interesting. What's this one? Who's Ben Jacobs here? Uh, he's one of the blue check marks. What's his deal? He says... Trump's Nevada electors, including the chair of the Nevada Republican Party, are suing to either have Trump declared the winner of Nevada or to have the presidential election in the state annulled entirely. Uh, Jack Posobiec saying America's voting system is a joke. Canadians and Australians have been messaging me all week asking why we don't take elections seriously. Uh, Sydney Powell just said she believes Donald Trump received 80 million votes in the election. She said she will prove it, and I can't wait. She was on Newsmax. In Dominion, Dominion, Dominion. But, uh... <laughs> Music to my ears, Brian. I like to, I like to hear, yeah, it's good stuff. Dominion, Dominion, Dominion. No, I mean, Sidney Powell saying that, yeah. She what do we wait. know about her? Would I don't know her that well, but she's, she's someone who's very, very credible. So probably, you know, but like Giuliani, I mean, the guy... Not bring down the uh, you know the Costa Nostra like he's he's a real dude he's uh, you know cleaned up New York like he is a legitimate guy he is um, um, yeah a, a serious guy and uh, a very interesting character and um, he's coming up with some really good stuff so I'm uh, excited as yeah between him. And and Sydney, yeah, this is uh, quite a duo unraveling this whole thing, and then uh, another duo, maybe um, Bar Durham. You could see some uh, interesting uh, things happen. This could be some. This is an inc incredible few years uh, and some events just uh, around the corner that are going to be unfolding in front of us, just in time for the holidays, Brian. Just in time. <laughs> Hey, hey, Blake, real quick before we bounce, is there any way to the, the, the Army rating Germany uh, that the Army rated uh, facilities were, uh, that were connected to our voting systems? Have you heard this story? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Chicanery. Uh, what was the other one, Tom? Foolery. <laughs> I don't know how you translate that into all these different uh, European languages. But uh, you've got Germany, Spain, and uh, Serbia, and Canada, and Venezuela. They had them all? I think so. Is that enough? Is that how many people that are interfered that, that, that sort of have some meddling into our elections and this, this sketchy software? Yeah, it, it is a joke, and it's, it, it's, it's pretty embarrassing, but... Uh... I guess if you were desperate to uh, to win an election that you didn't think you were going to win. Eh. I, I feel like you'd want to cheat in one where like maybe the candidates are potentially evenly matched. I mean, this, this, this is, this is a tomato can versus, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Tyson Jumping and his prime. Feature, yeah. Right. You know, you're rolling out a, who is it, Tommy, uh, not touchdown, Tommy Vardell. What was it? What was the other guy? Man, they, they, they just put out some tomato cans for for Mike Tyson to to roll on. Oh yeah. Joe Biden wasn't even a serious candidate. I'm like, okay, well they're they're getting rid of Biden because nobody cares. This is gonna be an easy reelection, you know. It, oh yeah, it should have been. They had 17 terrible candidates, but I mean, he was still like the you know, like number 14, like out of like, it's like really that's. How did that happen? But I guess there was the, the miracle in, in South Carolina because it looked like he was done. He was like finishing fifth, like third, like he was, I, I can't remember the exact results of Idaho and Vermont or, or not Idaho, uh, Iowa. But um, yeah, he looked like he was um, done. He was the past. No one cared. And then all of a sudden South Carolina and uh, he never looked back. It was, it was crazy to see that he ended up being the best out of the, out of the 17. And um it was a it was a lot of it was mostly bad though. 
it was it was a tough deal. There wasn't really anybody that it could have stood. Yeah, with, without going, maybe Tulsi Gabbard. I Marianne Williamson's not really um, a thing. And then Yang. Those are the only three people that were even remotely interesting or different. And Tulsi Gabbard, I don't entirely trust, but she's probably the only one that could have. Uh, I think, or maybe, oh, sorry, Bernie, because he does have still have that big uh, yeah behind him. But that was really the only choices. And, and Bernie's not gonna uh, he's not gonna convert a lot of. Uh, Democrat. It, would, it would be a divisive it would have been bad so and the democrats would have had to end up uh, destroying themselves to let sanders so they really had no options it was bad yeah biden was their best chance really in, in their eyes kamala until tulsi took her out but then they brought kamala back so there you go that was the i i, I heard she got a she got a facelift in between there did you hear that as well there, there's possibilities that there's like body doubles or something that it could very well be I'm not going that far. a couple of different Kamala's they brought one out on and passed her off on TV. Like she did look very different. I'd have to see the, I had some screenshots. I, you know what? I actually time. did see a video like that. And someone said that you're not the real Kamala. Yeah. And, and whoever that was in that scene, like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think it was. <laughs> I don't know the context of what I was watching, but I saw something too. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So, what's next? When do we when do we do this again? What what do we try next? What do we have to work on? Uh, you mean as far as doing the uh, next broadcast? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know. We're kind of loosely thinking maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So tomorrow is Wednesday. Maybe we could do a show tomorrow. Something. Uh, pops up but yeah i think it would be great if we could do start doing with the new american media or whatever we uh do and we'll keep evolving this is a uh, show number one of uh yeah the kind of a relaunch of, of sorts um very exciting so it's um awesome to be here but yeah i'm thinking monday wednesday friday but we'll just see how it goes so uh, as we evolve but uh certainly going to be a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about in this uh, epic year of our lord 2020 Yes, sir. Uh, big, huge JR, uh, JR. He was saying Yang was the best guy. Yeah, I know a lot of people had Tulsi, you know, whether it was my brother or uh, Joe Rogan. A lot of people were like, why didn't you run Tulsi? She at least had something to offer. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I just uh, looking at the Joe Biden presidency, that, 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 that campaign. And, and thinking that's that that person in that campaign got the most votes in history. I just uh, <clears throat> I I I, I the majority, Brian. They were all there the whole time, just waiting. Of it was course, like, yeah. What yeah. do they call those, like chicadas or what are those those like weird like moths that pull out of the like every fourteen years? You know what I'm talking about? They uh, like it's like something you ever seen that weird phenomenon where those ah oh, never mind if you don't know the name of it offhand they have these weird things in nature where these um where the bats come back yeah where it's like they're just there's, it's all dormant and silent and all of a sudden just boom all of a sudden there's a flock everywhere and it's 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 uh, a, a nuisance but yeah it's weird that they just show up in droves and in every uh state across the, the country and there's a record turnout for joe biden even though there was uh barely 10 people to uh to show up at an event so but um i don't know what happened so oh well blake to look. that was yeah. clearly taken out of context is what they say because see joe biden took the health of the country seriously so he just chose not to have sixty thousand person rallies he would have obviously had them you know it's it's like that person watching like um, you know, Bruce Lee or, or watching somebody jumping down off of the top rope in WWE. You're like, yeah, you know, what, what, what's a good example in sports? You know, you, you watch, you watch a, a half court LeBron alley-oop to Anthony Davis or something. And you go, yeah, I could do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. So you don't get the context. Biden totally would have had 60,000 person rallies. He just chose not to, dummy. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I could have done that. Yeah, I could do that. I just don't want to. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet you would have Joe Biden. You know, he would show up at, at these little strange, you'd have like 12 couples with circles around him. Then you'd have Trump with wall to wall 
people, caravans, helicopters, pomp and circumstance, chanting, we love you. You know, <laughs> Biden is outnumbered by Trump supporters. Like they were following him around on his little stupid bus and bike tour or whatever that, that was. was. Hilarious. Yeah. It was like 10 to one Trump supporters. Like, like they were outnumbering him at these little events. He was getting trolled. Yeah, that was how bad it was. And um, Brian, it comes down oh, to yeah. evidence. Look, it, it comes down to evidence. I, my spidey senses said blowout from day one. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But man, we got to get some evidence. Or, yeah. or this, like- this, this version of this reality, it's gonna stick. It doesn't feel right. Doesn't seem like that's my timeline. So I don't know what we do with this. I'm, yeah, that's uh, interesting. We listen to Obama or we listen to the press. Yeah, maybe it's already over. What, what, are, we, what are we doing? We could just, uh, you know. No, no, let me, let me be clear. Yeah. The time to unite is now. Uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, I haven't done a, I haven't done an Obama voice in a while. That was weird. I was, I was really I'd trying to remember his cadence. I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, I'd I'd rather forget it again. But yeah, he, well, he wanted you to forget the uh, yeah, uh, forget that yeah, Trump and all this uh, nightmare, and that is uh, he wanted you to accept the uh, results. So um, yeah, you said that this should have been we should have just accepted this like the the day after that Trump should just oh. and just said hey sorry maybe he's just turning the keys right now and just say, let yeah. hey, Biden, come on, there you go. Well, I guess uh, fair's fair. Uh, you won. I guess that was the total. So there, there's a popular vote. You won. What do we need the electoral college for? So it's to- it's totally normal. Just pause an election in the middle of it, right? When it's all swinging red. Only to have yeah, like, wait, hold on. Time out, time out. It, yeah, it's like the you got the you got them on the run, and you're you're, you're pushing up the tempo uh, up up the court, and all of a sudden the other coach, yeah, it's just wait, 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 wait time out, time out. Uh-huh. And then you're gonna reset, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, we're just gonna have to wait, and then they're trying to uh, yes, insist that the Arizona is definitely, and it's not too close to call. It's definitely that they can make a an official call. They're very comfortable at this time to tell you, even though it's very early in the night, that it's definitely uh, definitely Biden won, and um, that's cool. So just uh, go back to bed. Yeah. Go, go back, back to yeah. sleep. Yes, that's an, that's another Maynard song with a perfect circle. Ooh. Swing into the drums of the new world order, and yeah, you gotta. The, yeah, that's a, that's a song that Maynard sings about the new world order. Okay, yeah, I think he's got a few that he alludes to. I don't get all all the lyrics, but uh, yeah, he's got quite a uh, few projects there. In addition to uh, yeah, tool with uh, a perfect circle, and what was oh, Pucifer, right? Yes, and they have a new album out. Have you listened to it? Nope. No, nothing about it. There's a few good songs on there. Uh, I want to look up the lyrics to that now. Do you have, do you have any other story to tell us? Do I really don't. What, um, yeah, so we are probably oh, around a good time. What time do we start today? I didn't know how long the, uh, the Zoom Yeah, about an hour. So, so this is the song called Pet by Perfect yeah. Circle. Yeah. It says, don't fret, precious, I'm here. Step away from the window and go back to sleep. Lay your head down, child. I won't let the boogeyman come. Counting bodies like sheep to the rhythm of the war drums. Pay no mind to the rabble. Pay no mind to the rabble. Head down, go to sleep to the rhythm of the war drums. Pay no mind to what other voices say. They don't care about you like I do, like I do. Safe from pain and truth and choice and other poison devils. See, they don't give a F about you like I do. Just stay with me. Safe and ignorant. Go back to sleep. Good stuff. What, what, uh, what year was that? Swing into the rhythm of the new world order and counting bodies like sheep to the rhythm of the war drums. Uh, did you say what lyrics or uh, what year that was rather? Yeah. Um, 
Good question. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, swaying to the rhythm of the New World Order and count the bodies like sheep to the rhythm of the war drums. The boogeymen are coming. The boogeymen are coming. Keep your head down. Go to sleep to the rhythm of the war drums. Anyway, uh, yeah, what year was that? Perfect Circle Pets. What? Interesting. Uh, symbolism. Yeah, look at um, what's going on. Because in a way, yeah, it's, it's a very... Uh, Two thousand world with the people three. that are woke and not woke and um the state of the world right now position that we find ourselves in yeah that's 2003 blake 2003 2003 well yeah it's deep stuff that's right after uh yeah 9 11 that was the big wars that was probably all driven by uh the war off in afghanistan and iraq and uh, it was certainly an interesting time. It looked like we were going to get into that um, perpetual war, both uh, home and abroad, with the um, never-ending war on terror mm -hmm. and the police state that um, came with it um, here at Homeland Security and, um, <laughs> and the TSA and all that stuff. Yeah, Brian really uh, sent us into kind of an interesting little dark age of, of sorts. I love but, it. Uh, I'd rather, you know, it's 2020, 2020 vibes, right? 2020 vibes. All right, well, let's wrap up show number one of the TNAM Night Show. Uh, Blake, remind people where to follow you. Check me on Twitter for now. Um, yeah, things are going to be evolving, moving, but uh, Blake underscore Wally underscore. And um, for now, but yes, it's, it's been delightful to be here, Brian. It's like getting the band back together in a way. We've done, we haven't done a show in a while. I know the band is getting back together. I like it. That's a good analogy. Um, yeah, we'll do this again. We'll do this again soon. Make sure you're following us on all the places. Invite your friends. Find us on all the all the platforms because you never know what day you're going to dis be disappeared from a current platform. So join us on all of them. Signing out for now. We'll talk to you again later. Take care, everybody. Your guide to the truth. The new American media dot com.